Yeah. Just feel like a fine wine, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a nice, uh, like a two thousand and three Burgundy, <laughs> like a real nice Burgundy. No, from a, nice... a little rank vine in Liverpool somewhere back in two thousand and three. <laughs> yeah, real rank vine, a, a yeah. Scouse, a Scouse yeah. Burgundy. Scouse Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Ross Buchanan, and I'm here joined by the Wombats, who just did an ace session for us. How's it going, guys? Very good, thank yeah. you. Great, yeah. yes. Good. What's been going on with you? We just it did a cracking UK tour, and then... Um, Possibly one of the best we've ever done. I think it probably it be was, was the yeah, best. it was the best. Yeah. I think, so. It was the best tour we've ever done. What made it so good? Just, you said it, so you... Well, yeah, no, yeah. I just made myself back it up. It was just, maybe it was made extra special from the fact we had, like, two years there where we didn't do a live show. Yeah. So the our energy, the crowd's en energy um, was, like, through the roof. And we played a couple of iconic venues that we haven't played before. Yes. Uh, so, no, but it was just, just a really... A real good crack. I mean, you guys look like you're absolutely having the best time of your life right now. You've been a band for like 18 years, but you just scored your first UK number one album. First of all, congrats. Secondly, you. You. how does it feel? You good? Yeah. Just feel like a fine wine, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a nice, uh, like a 2003 well burgundy, <laughs> like a real nice burgundy. No, from a, a nice... little rank vine in Liverpool somewhere back in 2003. <laughs> yeah, a real rank vine. A, a yeah. Scouse burgundy. A Scouse yeah. burgundy. Yeah. Scouse burgundy. <laughs> 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 so you played the O2. That must have been like really cool for you guys. You've done a lot of festivals in the UK to large mm. crowds before, but you've never played a venue of that size in London. How was that? Yeah, that was pretty magical. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. That certainly felt really. like you know almost twenty years in the making. Um, so yeah, it was pretty mad and. Can't wait to do it again. All our friends and family came down from Liverpool and, well, from wherever. Um, yeah. Well, f yeah, yeah, family came from everywhere. From yeah. LA, from yeah. Uh, yeah. Oslo, from Norway, yeah. yeah. And there was, uh, so was just loads of people. Uh, yeah. The backstage was, yeah. It was chaos. Right. It, it was chaos. It was like, it was like Easter weekend as well, wasn't kids it? kids every, yeah. everywhere. Like two-year-olds, like three-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> when you started off saying like, yeah, it was the biggest party, I wasn't expecting you to be like, yeah, there was just kids everywhere. <laughs> but like, I guess that's what happens when you're a band 20 years in the making getting to that point. But I was saying that on the night, I was like, I'm sure like before the pandemic, there was no kids hanging out back here and like everyone was just doing ridiculous things yeah. everywhere mm. and then all of a sudden it's just like you're gluing hearts onto your yeah. forehead yeah. Yeah. it was <laughs> like a full family party yeah. well i looked so around fun. at one point and murph's little one was like do it twerking basically like on stage in front of eleven thousand people <laughs> and just like playing with i think it was with our manager's niece or something yeah. as well just like just the, the pair of them just dancing they'd run just on the stage so and the mums were there going like and they were just like, Meh. she I'm staying refused out here. to watch any songs from out front, but uh, she got on the back of the stage and was um, just dancing. Do yeah. they just have triple A's just like knocking about the back of the O2, just like the security, just like, go on then? I don't think anyone, did Pretty they even much. have a pass? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, no, I don't think she had a pass. Uh, just an aura. Yeah. Well, she's she's just a baby icon. She'd just a be like, I'm icon. an icon. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. As you're saying, kind of like 20 years in the making to get to that point, do you guys feel like you've followed the, the standard model of a band? Do you guys feel well, like well, what is that? What does yeah. that even mean? I know exactly. <laughs> I would say it's a, it's it was a kind of a more traditional maybe like you know just touring, 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 and just gradually kind of building up fan base from um, from just playing shows nonstop basically around the country and around the world. It hasn't just been like we had a song in the first album that went absolutely crazy mm. and then we were playing stadiums. You know, it's been a hard graft. It felt very. Um, it's been like a nice gentle. Uh, build trajectory. A nice yeah. gentle gradient yeah rather than any big kind of um hmm. massive dips and spikes peaks. And, yeah yeah do you think that's like maybe the reason a lot of bands kind of forming in 2004 in that period of time didn't make it as far as you guys have made it do you feel like that's maybe the reason why potentially i mean i do i do think bands that blow up very early on in their career like not that the doomed in a way but it's like you kind of gotta can i say shit beep yeah <laughs> you, you've kind of got to have your beep together in order to be able to deal with that kind of stuff i think yeah so, yeah i don't know i think it probably feeds into it a little bit because it's it's such a strange like world and life being on tour loads and playing big shows and all the rest of it that we really did start at the bottom and just like play tiny little venues all around the place and we did all our own like driving 
sleeping on promoters' floors, you we're know, like, lugging our own gear around. He was the only one that could pack the back of the van, Mr. <laughs> Tetris over here. You know, we're talking yeah. like three to four years of just like, you know, slugging it around. And I think like having that kind of background mm. make you maybe like appreciate it more maybe like when, when things started to actually like, you know, happen. But it's satisfying when you get to this point, isn't it? Don't yeah. have to load out yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys live in completely different parts of the world. Do you think that's maybe been part of the the kind of process of you guys getting to this point as well? Yeah, I mean, inevitably, mm. It, mm. because that happened. And, you know, Dan and Todd came over to LA a lot, and I've flown over to Oslo and London a lot, and we just, that's kind of how it works now. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And the new album recorded separately from each of your own places, right? Not all of it, but okay. like uh, um, a lot of it, yeah. The three of us, three were, of us never were never in the, in the same again. room. Like that's mad. Yeah. But Todd managed to get over to London just before the that was like the a November couple of days lockdown. Before the lockdown, um, and then we were just in we the were a bubble the basically. And Murph was in a bubble over in LA in a studio, um, and we were just sending files back and forth, and some positives, some trickier things like trying to keep it all organised. But fortunately, we had really good producers, like and engineers, who were very anal at like keeping everything in the right you know i mean considering right you guys are never in the same room the record still feels like really intimate i don't think that like i've lost out on anything from that being the process no 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 that was our aim as well you know we were like we wanted to to feel like like we were there like there's loads you know loads of energy and to be honest we've we've been making music for so long that I th we just kind of we're used to working in whatever way we need to to make the song feel as good as possible so um, we wouldn't do it yeah. again, though. I think if we got uh, yeah, got a chance to well, choose, I, I always say I'd do it one more time. I'd do it one more time. <laughs> I'd, I'd, do it, I'd do it one more time, but probably not a second. <laughs> I was going to ask you about um, kind of getting back together and being a band and doing all these shows and stuff. Have you found it difficult, you know, being in separate parts of the world and then coming back together? Is there anything that you've struggled with at all? Not for me. Not not, not really. The only kind of thing that I noticed after the pandemic was when we did Reading and Leeds in 2021, which I, I, I didn't really think was ever going to happen. I'd written it off. I was like, yeah, there's no way that's happening. Anyway, it did. We got together, rehearsed <laughs> for a bit. And then about an hour before stage or two hours before stage time, I just got this huge kind of like feeling in my chest. And I was like, has am I about to have a panic attack or has someone like spiked my drink or yeah. what? But it was just adrenaline yeah. that yeah. I have never felt that I hadn't felt for two years. Yeah, I mean, I haven't done an interview in two years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm feeling right now. No, but it is that thing because when you're on top, you know, you just get used to this feeling and then having, having not had that for so long, the whole process of being on tour and like the physical toll that it does take, like, because we're all very energetic on stage and stuff. And like, that was the one thing I think I noticed that after a week on tour, especially in America, like we did five and a half weeks in America, I was like, ah, all the old aches and pains started coming back yeah. that I hadn't felt for two years, yeah. you know? And I was like, oh yeah, I need to do more, st you know, just the, the routine. Comes back yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the new record as well, uh, Fix Yourself, Not The World, it's a great album. At points, does feel quite apocalyptic, like kind of this, this scary view of the world. Is that re a reflection of how the world is or do you not, I'm classic music journalist, just imprinting my own ideas onto your album, but how do you feel about that album? I haven't heard the term apocalyptic about it yet. Sounds but good. I mean, <laughs> I mean of one of the tracks, Everything I Love is Going to Die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I, I feel like that song is potentially like the happiest one. It's like maybe <laughs> when you realize that everything's going to end, you start enjoying the little things a lot more. And I, yeah. But you know, we're all really proud of the album and so happy that it came together even though it was recorded in a very silly way one of the lyrics which really screwed me over um was it's not paranoia if it's really there yeah that i, I just wrecked me for for a couple of weeks i'm sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> um anything to say on that at all no there's some good meditation apps you might want to get <laughs> some, maybe so i can link you up with some good therapists oh that'd be nice yeah. tell me about your nfts the, you sold 3,000 actual wombats in the sandbox, which for people who aren't involved in that kind of thing sounds absolutely baffling. Um, what made you guys get involved with that? It was baffling to us as well, to be honest. <laughs> um, our manager got in touch and was like, uh, right, this is all quite new, um, but let's have a chat with this company that are doing it. 
So we had a few um, Zooms with them and, uh, yeah, to get our heads around it. But also the whole metaverse thing, the idea of doing, like, a gig online um, in this virtual reality kind of world. Um, recreating was, Brixton Academy Yeah, well. recreating Brixton, like, us three as avatars on there and then people being able to get an NFT, which is an avatar of a wombat that the, you know, the designers had like made yeah. all unique ones. And like the way it can be used as just a digital key, essentially, that's how it was explained to us that it's like, you know, you can buy a ticket essentially for that gig, but it's just called an NFT. And with that, you also get like backstage access and various other things and signed guitars and like a Rubik's Cube game, all this stuff. We were like, this is pretty, pretty mind blowing. Um, but and yeah, yeah. I, we've, we've kind of done we did one thing like that before. Yeah, back in like 2008, I what think. What was it called? Um, Second Life. Second oh, Life. Oh, yeah. And so you guys were way ahead of the game. Which was yeah. obviously not as polarizing as all this stuff now. Yeah. But um, no, I think we just thought of it as an experiment. And sometimes things that are polarizing soon become the norm. And mm. sometimes things that are polarizing just die a death and we're kind of yeah. happy with either way <laughs> <laughs> um i know you're not on twitter but did you guys get any kind of flack for getting involved with the NS nfts at all i've seen other bands kind of getting a little bit of a yeah it was a real mixed bag to be honest there were loads of people who were dead excited about it and um but there were some people who a i think a mixture of didn't actually you know still it's so new don't actually understand exactly what it is so they were saying some you know i can't believe you're doing this because you know, pyramid scheme, yeah. Ponzi scam, whatever. And we were like, but obviously having spoken to the, like the designers and all the rest of yeah. it and the company that do this, we were like, well, no, 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 hang on. Wait, you need to just speak to them. So then we got, a t you know, the people who work there to try and explain to the people who had concerns. But, and then there was, there were different angles that people had issues with and stuff. And it was like, well, in the same way that we make cassettes, you know, of our album, I don't think any of us actually listen to our cassettes, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to do that because there are some people out there who really like listening to old cassettes yeah. or they like having it on that. You know, everyone's got a different angle and there's loads of gamers out there who love like the idea of taking an avatar and like winning a Fender guitar and like running around and smashing zombies on the head <laughs> with a wombat <laughs> avatar. Like, I don't think any of us three are going to be doing that anytime soon, no? but that's happening. That sounds satisfying. There, there might be someone out there now beating a zombie to death with a virtual Fender guitar. Of and ours, all so. power to that person. <laughs> yeah. and, if, and if they are having a great moment and then, Fair play. you know, so... Um, Adam Tiger. Yeah. yeah, and as Merv said, it's like new things that come along. There's always controversy around them. It'll we'll go see, one way or the other, and we'll see where it goes. You've like, done it before. No one gave you yeah. any flack for Second Life, so yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah have you seen the avatars of Second Life? You can see it on YouTube. <laughs> oh my god, we're all very gangly, kind of strange looking. I'm creatures. definitely gonna check that out. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got uh, loads of tour tour dates coming up, loads of festivals coming up. Is there anything in particular that you are looking forward to? I'm, myself, I'm going to be at Kendall Calling. I really can't wait to catch you guys. Is there anything you're really looking forward to? to doing this summer uh, Kendall Calling will be a, that'll be really fun we've never, we've never done that before, before so. that'd be great um, you ever tried uh, Kendall Mint Cake oh yes oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 we'll crack that out yeah it's a staple on a nice long hike isn't yeah. it <laughs> why, why, why why do hikers like um, Kendall Mint Cake again is it loads of sugar, sugar probably right? yeah okay. I thought you were setting up for a joke then you know I'm no, no. pretty certain like if you <laughs> yeah. go no no I wasn't no, I'm pretty certain you walk in the <laughs> lakes you have a bit of Kendall you walk in the, if you, like most people walk <laughs> in the lakes or they did back in the, the late 80s would have some um, yeah. Kendall mint cake not yeah. that I was going on Lake District hikes when I was four but yeah I'll bring some for you anyway. Yeah, yeah. please do. We'll That'd be great. Together, yeah, I haven't time. tried it before, yeah. so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's class. Yeah, don't get your hopes up. Okay then. <laughs> well, nice one, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for the session. Uh, really can't wait to watch that back. Thanks so nice much. Stuff. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us.